Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so I didn't think I was going to make another fun, challenging algebra video for a while, but I found this really cool problem, so I thought I'd share. Um, so it says, find the product of the imaginary roots of this cortex. Now, this fourth degree polynomial has either two imaginary roots or four imaginary roots. And we know that because imaginary roots come as conjugate pairs. The conjugate root theorem tells us that. And I already have a video proving the conjugate root theorem, so check that out. Now, um, to see if this uh, cortex has four or two imaginary roots, we should try and factor it. But how do we start factoring it? Well, if you pay attention here at the first three terms, which are intentionally highlighted in maroon, then they kind of look like the Pascal triangle um, line for a plus b to the fourth power, right? Because a plus b to the fourth power from Pascal's triangle and binomial expansion using Pascal's triangle would have coefficients 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And this already starts as 1, 4, 6. So what we want is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So what we should do is break these two uh, last terms so as to get that desired um, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. What I'm saying is let's rewrite our cortex in this way which is a mere rewriting of the cortex. It doesn't change the actual um, cortex we're working with, right? Because uh, minus 4x plus 27x make 23x, and then 1 minus 27 make a minus 26. So I didn't do anything but rewrite the last two terms as four terms here, right? Now I'm going to show a slightly different highlighting of this, but not changing it. So let's highlight the first five terms, and this is what I'm talking about. Now, if you are doing binomial expansion using Pascal's triangle, what I'm saying is this 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 there would be from, from Pascal's triangle uh, for the line that it'd be used in the binomial a plus b to the fourth power. But wait, uh, what's this minus sign in front of this 4 and this minus sign in front of this 4? Well, it must be a minus b to the fourth power, and it is. It's of the form x minus 1 to the 4th, these first five terms. They make x minus 1 to the 4th power. So that's the crucial recognition here. And how convenient then that the last two terms here also have a 27 and a 27 because that should make things even nicer. The first five terms, as I said, in the rewriting of our uh, cortex, these first five guys make x minus 1 to the 4th. And then the last two guys here also have a convenience about them. So uh, we can write this here in place of our cortex. In other words, this here is just a rewriting of the original cortex we're given. We did not change the original cortex at all, right? Okay, cool. As I said, the fact that uh, we've got a 27x minus 27 here is of convenience. Namely, we can factor a 27. And when we do, look at what we've got. This here, these two guys can be written as 27 times x minus 1. How nice, because that means I have an x minus 1 here and x minus 1 here. And so I can factor out an x minus 1 from both of these guys here. When I do, I could write x minus 1 times uh, what I'll have remaining. And x minus 1 gone from here means x minus 1 to the third. And then x minus 1 gone from here means just have a 27. <laughs> and furthermore, this here is a sum of cubes. So I could work with that too, because... Remember, the sum of cubes formula said that a cubed plus b cubed is equal to this here, right? And so using this right-hand side, we can work with this here, uh, which is of the form a cubed plus b cubed, where a is x minus 1 and b is 3, right? So what I'm saying is if we just now worry about x minus 1 cubed plus 27, first we could rewrite it as x minus 1 cubed plus 3 cubed, and then we can apply the sum of cubes right-hand side and see that it's the same as this, which is a plus b, that's x minus 1 plus 3, and then times a squared, x minus 1 squared, minus ab, x minus 1 times 3, plus b squared. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, this here, x minus 1 plus 3, is just x plus 2. And this over here is, well, first, x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then here we can distribute the minus sign from the left and the 3 from the right to write minus 3x plus 3. And then we've got a plus 9 from the 3 squared. So all that is summarized here. Okay, cool. 
and all this could be uh, condensed a little bit because in the second parenthesis here is just a quadratic. It's x squared and then minus 2x minus 3x make minus 5x and then 1 plus 3 plus 9 make 13. So this is x squared minus 5x plus 13. So x plus 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 13 is a suitable replacement for x minus 1 cubed plus 27. Therefore, our quartic, which was this and then which we wrote like this, can be rewritten furthermore like this and therefore showing uh, clearly the two real roots that we're going to get one from this factor and the other from this factor so our two real roots are x equals one and x equals uh, negative two so if it does have imaginary roots uh, both of them must come from this quadratic and yes this quadratic is irreducible meaning we cannot factor it meaning its roots are imaginary and so if we want to write uh, this quadratic in factored form, x squared minus 5x uh, plus 13, we can only write it in factored form uh, using its two imaginary uh, roots, z and its conjugate z bar. And so we could rewrite this quadratic once we find its two imaginary roots as x minus z, where z is one of its complex or imaginary roots, times x minus z bar, right? But wait, if we multiply this out we see that the product of the two imaginary roots um, is going to just be this last term here namely 13 and therefore our answer is 13 yeah all right cool now i hope you liked this video and if you did it well it can't help you but if you've got questions leave them in the comments section uh keep watching and take care